which the privateers... Uh, Inferno, you know what a privateer is, right? I do. Legal pirates, in yep, other words. Pretty much pirates sponsored by nations. Pirates with a permission slip from daddy. Um, yeah. Basically, uh, in the 15th and 16th century, nations didn't have navies the way that we have navies now. What they would do is they would hire freelancers and give them what they call a writ of mark, um, which is basically a note saying that this country uh, gives permission for this person to pirate these ships from this other nation. Um, and that's what they would do. And the Baron, it's a perfect tactic for the Baron because they're not very warlike. They don't have the biggest military. Um, and they don't want to be seen as warmongers. So what they can do is hire privateers to go, you know, disrupt the split and still disavow any knowledge of it. Um, it seems like something that would be very realistic for the Baron to do. So here's our character who's named uh, Baron von Squeeperton. Huh? See what I did there? Huh? Huh? Yes. Very yes, clever. you made yourself a baron. Uh, no, baron, you know, because they're, they're called the baron. The baron from the oh, sweeper team. I thought that was your a a double, boron baron. It's a double entente. Uh, I'm watching okay. the advertisement screen on your game. Uh -huh. uh, advertising some space sandwich. <laughs> really? Space sandwich? I don't see that. I still see a thingy spinning around. Well, that That's thing will show advertisements every once in a while. Um, so, basically, he, his job is, uh, he's, he's, publicly he's been tried and put in prison. So, he's kind of given a new identity, um, and his task is to undermine split operations any way he can, meaning piracy, uh, pirating freight liners, killing and capturing their ships, and whatever. And the idea is to start with one ship and make as big of an operation as we can eventually maybe be able to get maybe a corvette or capture more ships or be able to maybe start raiding their factories and taking them over etc etc um and baron von squeeperton has no need for motivation because the split ruined his whole career so he's all about the the payback um so i'm gonna go ahead and start uh i'm gonna start a custom game now i have a lot of scripts custom scripts installed to make this game um, better for let's play purposes so that we don't have to spend 10 hours getting ready to just be able to do this stuff um, is this also the game that has that ba Babylon 5 mod that you love no that's free space 2 oh okay that'd be interesting since you love Babylon 5 so much that'd be interesting to do an Iron Man of well sadly no because uh, it um, the, that mod doesn't have a storyline so much as it just kind of puts you in some of the famous battles from the show Oh, okay. Argon, Flight School, All right, so this is, this is first, this is called a custom start. It allows me to start any way I want, because there's only certain starts of the game. So this will allow me, for example, to change my starting location to um, Kingdom's End, which is the, the capital for the bar. Mm -hmm. uh, and my favorite place, because the music is just so fantastic in that sector. Um, which is... You don't care about that, but I do. The Borons are amazing with music. Yes. They are actually, no, it, it's true. Like, most of the music is very atmospheric or whatnot, but the music there, for some reason, is just incredibly peaceful. Yes, I want to. This. I want to go to there. Would you compare these Borons to Salarians, actually? Yes, actually. That might not be a bad comparison. I, I thought Borons were more like tradey trade than techy tech. -tech. Um, um, no, uh, there's still techy tech. -tech. There's definitely techy tech. -tech. Yeah. Squee. Uh huh. Squeeze. Character's name is Boron von Squeeperton. Squeeperton. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, my player ship. Now I I stressed about the player ship a lot because hang on I gotta turn the music's loud even for me. Um, mm -hmm. I stressed out about how to start, because if I start with a pitily nothing ship, uh, this is going to be a very short game. Mm. Very short, considering that I'm partaking in piracy. Um, <laughs> however, if I start with too big a ship, then where's the fun? Where's the fun of seeing him, you know, advance type thing? Yeah. So the, the conclusion I came to is that I'm going to give myself one of the best one-man fighters the Boron have, but... It's going to be a fixer-upper, meaning I have the ship, but it comes with nothing. The idea is that they kind of oh, gave, like gave me one of their ships from, like, the junkyard or it's old. I'm going to have to work it up. So when I devote some time and effort into it, it's going to be one of the best ships out there for a, um, 
Oh, what's Pirate. the difference between the skate and the skate prototype? Mm. One's a prototype. <laughs> I'm wondering if Slow down, Squee. No, I'll just do the regular skate because I don't I don't want to spend the time to look yeah. it up right now. Uh, unless someone in the chat knows, I'm assuming the prototype's better, but I don't know how much better. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I'll just go with the regular one. That's fine. Um, but it has like no shields, no lasers, no nothing. So the idea is they go here. Here's this, but you're gonna have to fix it up yourself. Um, fill carriers. I don't need carriers. All right. I'm gonna start with ten thousand credits, which is not a lot. Trust me. Um, so basically, what they said is because they they want him to succeed, they're not just gonna throw him out there with no resources to start because then he's gonna be, not be able to do anything. So they give him a decent ship that's a fixer-upper and 10,000 credits, and um, that's it as far as that goes. I don't need any of this stuff. Um, oh, you know, where's player relations? Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, well, you know, I have to say one thing I love um, about some of these games, these types of games, I love the idea of starting small or almost with nothing and then gradually building your way up. Mm -hmm. I know that's the typical RPG thing, but like, say for example, even in like one of the Total War games, sometimes you can be a very large nation off the get-go with a lot of power and you have to try to maintain it. Right. I hate doing that. I always like playing a smaller nation and trying to get bigger, <laughs> rather than being a big nation and try to stay the same. Okay. So that might be an idea for... The oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Explain something. Oh, sorry. Um, I w yeah, I was going to uh -huh. keep on going. Um, another thing, a couple things I have is I've, I've put my relations with the bar on all the way up to max. So, like, you can't buy certain things until you have a good enough relations with them. Uh, realistically speaking, since I'm working for the bar on, they're going to let me purchase anything I need, but they're going to say, you have to purchase it yourself so that we can have plausible deniability. In other words, we didn't <laughs> give this to him. He bought it on his own. Um, gotcha. But it saves a lot of time, otherwise I'd spend 10 hours trying to build up my relationship just so I can buy their weapons. Um, so I'm going to set my relationship with just them. Everyone else is just set to default, but with the bar on, um, yeah, I'm going to have max relationship. Also, I'm going, um, I've made it so that all the sectors are explored because I know these games are really big on exploration. But, first of all, exploration is not really the point of this particular run-through, and secondly, it's completely unrealistic. In a technological society like this, if I'm trying to find downtown, I don't just go down a bunch of roads until I find it, I just hit Google Maps. You know? So the idea that I don't have access through the interwebs to what the galaxy looks like is a little silly, in my opinion. Um, we? Mm -hmm. Would it be possible if you could change what you're playing on Twitch TV? Because everyone's confused as to what you're playing. Oh, really? Guys... They think it's DBZ League, and then a lot of people are like, what game is this? And if you change it to X3, then you'll get less questions yeah, like that. Okay. You don't have to, I'm just suggesting. Oh, uh, um, hang on. Let me go do that. I, I honestly thought that... It's it's usually a lot of trouble to change it every time you play a different game, and most people don't. Yeah, don't I even... agree. Which is why I always leave it blank. <laughs> I should do that. I should just leave it blank. Yeah, you can uh, just leave it. How blank. do I do that? How do I go to let's see settings? Is it settings or? Uh, no, just go to dashboard. Okay, dashboard. Um, just leave it blank. How do I leave it blank? Not playing? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. Not playing, and Play. I'm just gonna not title this. So why is it like always ah real monsters on your? Uh, because that was just the title. I mean, unless every time I start up the stream, I come over here and change my title and stuff, it'll always be that title. And I figured that was a nice little show from my childhood, and it was a game that I'd probably never play. So. <laughs> you just... So you want to just confuse everybody? Pretty much. That's <laughs> uh, what hey, I mean. You oh. should have Pajama Sam, <laughs> the first one. No, you should have Bananas in Pajamas. Bananas but you should, Pajamas. You should see the, the title for Pajama Sam, the first game. Can't you just like put uh, the squeeze stream of Scoopianism on it? I could later. That's a good idea, actually. I'll have to do that. <laughs> um, one more thing I'm going to point out to everyone. Um, so not only do I have the galaxies explored, uh, and you guys agree, that does make sense where I'm coming from. 
that in yeah. a society like this, I should be able to pull up the interweb and find out what the galaxy looks like. Yeah, unless there's like some areas in the outer rim that people aren't a hundred percent sure about. Yeah, right. the galaxy has been explored for crying out loud. And um, there's one more thing that I'm doing to save, just simply to save time. I'm putting satellites, advanced satellites, in all sectors. Normally, you can you you can't you don't know what's going on in each sector unless you place a satellite there for recon, which makes sense. Um, however, this takes hours to do, to, to get the money for the satellites, to place the satellites, etc., etc. What I'm saying is simply that the, the Baron are giving me one more gift. They're letting me jack into their satellite surveillance system so that I can track what's going on in different sectors. It's a little That's bit... good justification. Yeah, it's a little bit of a cheat, but it saves, for Let's Play purposes, it saves hours of effort, and it's a fairly realistic way of going about it. I will still have to probably set up a few satellites here and there uh, if I'm trying to get a specific, like, trade lane. Maybe this is a good trade lane to raid. So I might still have to put a few here and there, but that's the basic justification for that. And um, that's, let's get started, shall we? Yes. People are eager to see you do blow up things. Well, it'll start off a bit slow because I'm going to have to first, I'm not going to just run out there and blow up things. I don't even have lasers. Well, <laughs> luckily you have us to offer ripping dialogue exactly. and discussion and other crap. Most likely we're gonna see Squee exploding also. Also, hang on, <laughs> yes. let me um, shift High chance of Squee explosions. <laughs> Hello! What's Tomorrow's that? forecast cause for light drizzles of rain and a 93% chance of Squee explosions. <laughs> All right, hang on. I gotta, I gotta set up something real quick. Um, not the cheat menu. Uh, I need the cheat. Menu. <laughs> cheat menu. No, there, there's a, another mod I, I did installed. The, did the Boron give you that too? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> um, they just Boron. They're just gave so generous. Me. No, there's, <laughs> there's, a, there's a reason year. for it. Um, mainly because uh, uh, time saver. Uh, the only thing I'm going to use the cheat menu for, it has tons of options, but the only thing I'm going to use it for is when I capture ships, the way you capture ships in this game is you basically shoot them until the pilot bails, right? Yeah. And then mm -hmm. what I would do if I were normally just regularly playing this game is I would get out of my ship into my spacesuit and I would repair the ship manually so that I could then sell it. However, that takes an incredibly long time and no one wants to sit there and see me do that for 15 minutes. So to save time, I will simulate doing it and then I'll just use the cheat to put it up to full. Because my justification is, otherwise you're just going to sit there for 15 minutes and watch me do it. So, wow, really? Legitimately 15 minutes? Uh, sometimes, depending on this the ship. This game is hardcore. Huh? Burn. Yeah, I'm so telling you, this, this game is hardcore. Um, and the plug-in configuration is just a way for me to uh, to um, manage all the different little plugins and stuff, which the one I need to manage right now is um, the NPC bailing add-on, which basically it allows you to control... Uh, rates and stuff for the way people bail. Normally when ships bail, it's very rare, uh, to the point of being almost unrealistic. Most pilots would jump if their ship's going to blow, but in this game they don't do that. Uh, for the purposes, again, of not having this game take 40 hours to do anything, I'm upping them a little bit so that there's a slightly higher chance that ships will bail, because that's going to be my main way of making money in this game, is causing capturing other ships. Uh, not doing huge ships bail. Actually, Inferno, you'll like this. For huge ships, like capital oh. ships, what you have to do is uh, hire marines, have the marines board the ship, and fight a boarding action to try and take over the ship. That's a, that is cool. Right. I'm, I'm assuming you don't get to see the boarding action. No, no, you just you just right. have progress reports on it, basically. Still, that's cool. Progress reports, that's cool. I like that. Yes, random man. Please privateer. What is going on in the background? Piff, are you killing someone? <laughs> no. Just so cool. Yeah. Alright, we'll leave all that stuff the way it is. So this should make it so that ships bail a little more often, uh, which will allow me to save them a little bit more. But, like I said, right now, uh, since they gave me a, a fixer-upper, uh, let's take a look at my ship. My ship has no shields, no lasers, no, uh, no improvements. Were accepted um, wow, sounds like a keeper. Yeah, I know, right? But uh, it is actually a really cool ship. Let me show you. Let me go uh, jump out the side of the ship real quick. Uh, <laughs> Let me just get out of this thing. Just pop out well, of my ship. Well, he died because he forgot to put on the space suit. He was sucked into the vacuum of space. End of game. On to the next. And uh, so this is my ship. Uh, it's actually one of the reasons why I love the bar on us. Their ships just look so cool. 
they look very fish-like. Very Vulcan-esque. 